Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333 with Nanolades at Dawn. I've got to find a way of doing the introduction more properly, but yes, that is what is happening. We are doing. Well, okay, that's not what's happening. What's actually happening is a Zero K exhibition match. Nanolades at Dawn merely being the title because everything has a title. I need to have a title. So, Nanolades at Dawn is like dueling, except with the guns that the commanders have to build stuff with. Not this big gun, but the other one. The one on their other arm. This thing here. The Nanolades. Anyway. Explanations aside, let's get to the game itself, or rather to the map. So, this is Titan Duel. If you aren't familiar with the map, that, that probably because you haven't been watching the stream very much. So, welcome to the stream. Hello. Or the cast on YouTube. Hello. Welcome. Stay a while. Let me know if anything's confusing. Let me know if everything's confusing. It probably will be. I'm sorry. I try to do my best to explain, but this is a dense game. Anyhow, introductions aside, this map is flat. Very vehicle. Also got a very nice starfield. That was a mistake, but I'll go for it. It's a very nice Starfield skybox. It's important to note the skybox is a neat plan in the side. I think there's another map that shares the skybox too. It's got a very pretty skybox. But the map itself, the actual playable section of the map, is very flat. And thus is very vehicle focused. Though it's interesting because these areas here, these are kind of soft choke points. Vehicles have a hard time getting in here. But these pits are very obvious choke points. And typically what happens is players will often drive, usually scorchers, the light vehicle stuff, They'll drive them through here to just block off their opponent from getting in. The body blocking play can be very intricate, and it's really neat to watch. But since Rymark is playing, we'll have jump bots because Rymark always plays jump bots. But that'll also be interesting because you don't see jump bots on this map much. There is some height variance, there are some stuff, with, well, some geothermal plant locations at a high ground. For the most part, though, there's not much to jump up to. It's just Rymark really likes jump bots and I guess is wanting to see how they play out on this map, on this rather flat map. Probably going to focus more on moderators and placeholders than on pyros, but maybe they'll do a placeholder pyro. Like, trap everything and then burn it to death. And Felthos is going for... Oops, one times. Felthos is going for the more typical light vehicle factory. Dart, probably Dart, Scorcher, and Mason. While Rymark going for an opening with pyro. So they are indeed going for the pyro opening. I'm a little bit surprised. I honestly would have expected to have, on a map like this, either puppy opening or... I guess open with the Freaker. Get the Constructor right out right out of the gate. Because the map is not that small. I mean, you can get the Constructor out and start building stuff, and then you wouldn't have to worry so much about getting your economy up quickly. Failthos right now has actually a bit of an advantage in they can set up... They can set up more flexibly. They can set up a bit faster. I mean, their commander's moving, their worker's building, and everything's going at full efficiency, whereas Rymark right now entirely reliant on their commander. And there are the puppies, and there's the Freaker. Okay, so they have a setup. At this point, though, Paeldoss and Rymark are neck and neck when it comes to economy. I just think Paeldoss is going to have an easier time expanding. They're just going to be expanding faster. They have two expansion points. That's why it's important on larger maps. When you can get away with it, build multiple workers. Always build more workers because you need to have that for your economy construction. Like early on, it can make a big difference. I mean, they're fairly evenly matched, so it probably won't make that big of a difference. Well, okay, actually, what am I saying? 120. Yeah, okay, never mind. Not that evenly matched. Zero K's not got the biggest community, so yeah, 250 elo difference is evenly matched by my standards, since... No, it's not evenly matched. I think that's like a 25-75 chance, or like, yeah, I think it's like a two-way matchup between the two, so... Still, it's never a good idea to let economy go to waste, but it's always a good idea to harass economy, as Rymark... Ooh, is this gonna work? I don't know. That, that defender is gonna be able to kill this thing in a second. Oh no, not quite. No, only got two missiles reloaded. Defender's down. This is actually going very... Ooh, nice. Rymark, well done. Is that... Not the factory, this is the Scorcher, but still. The factory under threat. The mech's down. Wow, Rymark is taking this very quickly. Failthoss has no defenses other than the Defender. I mean, they wouldn't have expected Jump Boss. Not on this map. Oh, he pointed out the Defender shot the... That didn't help, but yeah. On this map... Okay, the Pyro's gone down, but the damage is done. Rymark has plus five on top of Failthoss. I mean, they have a pretty big economic advantage. The only downside, they aren't building anything. And th this is the thing that's giving Felthos any time to breathe, is that Rymark is not actually building things with the economic advantage they have. Oh, there we go. Not sure why things were not moving. But yeah, with the economic advantage they have, Rymark is not building anything. Oh, I'm sorry, is it lagging for the viewers? Strange. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, so that's... Yeah, Defender against Pyro is not a good idea. As you can see, it just doesn't have enough missiles. Lotus is a pretty good idea. Lotus and Pyro is a roughly even matchup. 
and typically it depends on if the Lotus has been focused on. If the Pyro is not focusing on the Lotus, the Lotus wins. Why is the character not helping out here? That's bizarre. Is it low priority? No, it's not. That's really weird. Oh, high priority commander, that's why. Yeah, Fail Thoughts has only 10. Now it's only plus 10 medals of the commander alone. But Rymark, wow, really getting ahead. That harassment was great. Despite the lack of production, despite the excess, and despite the lack of energy, Rymark is still expanding very nicely and getting massive economic lead. They just haven't taken advantage of it yet. Seriously, why have none of the Freakers built caretakers or just, uh, just assisted the factory directly? That's very bizarre. At any rate, this is, I think, still kind of open. The fact that Reinmark was not using the production means their their military is fairly powerful, but at the same time, Felthos now knows what they have to deal with. They know what they're up against, and they, well, getting up levelers, okay counter, not terrible. Better than Scorchers, that's for sure. And with the Lotus up, so they're not going to be too worried about static defense. Their static defense is well set up. But Rymark still has the economic advantage. That is a huge deal. And that was a huge deal. Like, early game economic advantage like that. Ooh, nice. That's a good reclaim target. Actually, that's one big thing. It's really surprising. Why is Felthos not reclaiming all this stuff? This is 380 metal right here. That would get them even. Granted, their production is making up for it. I mean, the fact that they aren't... They aren't to deal with Rymark actually using the 26 metal. Using 15 of it. Okay, 20 now. Got two Freakers. That is going to be possibly a turning point. There we go, get the Caretaker up. Get that production going. But yeah, why is this... The Caretaker could be reclaiming here. Caretaker should be reclaiming, actually. Felthos could make better use of it if there was some reclaim going on. Or at least this Mason. Something needs to reclaim this. The Caretaker would just get even. If the Caretaker reclaimed, Felthos and Rymark would be even economically. But I don't see that happening. Felthos just going for static expansion. I'm really surprised they aren't reclaiming. That's I'm going to harp on that. Yeah, 500 metal, actually, within the Caretaker's range. And Pyros are not going to do too much. The Levelers will be able to deal with them. Although, I say Levelers, plural. One Leveler is not going to be enough against two Pyros. Not like going super well. Yeah, that one Leveler is dead. The next one's out of range. Still good harassment going on. There we go. There's the Reclaim. Felthos is on top of that, finally. Felthos actually will be able to get ahead with this. They just need a bit more extra production. That's the weird... That's the thing. They need to have enough Caretakers for production and Reclaim. Rymark isn't producing once again. Rymark, that's the thing. That's going to be giving Felthos the game. If there's anything that's going to give Feldos the game is that Rymark has been excessing metal most of this time. They haven't been producing anywhere near as much as they could be throughout this entire game. Compared to basically anything else. So I don't... I don't know. That's going to be problematic. Because Rymark is... Rymark's ahead. Rymark has been ahead for most of this game. They're ahead economically. The reclaim is making up for it. But the thing is, the reclaim is limited. Rymark's static economy... Rymark's just... Standard economy off of metal extractors is almost double that of Felthos. Well, not could double that, but it's still plus 10 over Felthos. That's still an extra caretaker over Felthos. That is going to translate into a massive military advantage. They already have a military advantage. Rymark is... The only thing that's putting Rymark in a bad spot is that they aren't really using it. I mean, they've been using a static defense, which is actually fairly wise from the looks of it. And now they're using onions. There we go. Now they have 30 going into the factory. That's what they need. Alright, so that that gives Fail Thoughts not a huge amount of options. I see the Ravager. They, I, they must have seen the Jack. Although, I guess the Jack? Yeah, that's not a terrible choice. It's just not really any good choices. The Wolverine would kind of work, but then the Jack can jump over that. But the Jack does have to get close. The Wolverine's Claws would do a decent job. And, yeah, Rymark is winning this. Sorry, putting on the chat. Rymark is indeed winning this. Rymark is winning this because Rymark harassed the hell out of Fail Thoughts right at the start of the game. And got a massive economic advantage, and the only reason why Feltas even has a chance right now is because Rymark was not really expanding at a good rate. But yeah, I mean, looking at the units that they have, Dominatrix is always kind of one of those things. Actually, it's a Jack Dominatrix would be really good. That'd be total value. But Wolverines would probably also be fairly valuable. Just because, I mean, the Jack can't do anything about the Claws. It just hits them. Ravagers are an okay idea too. They tank things out. Working surprisingly well against the moderators, actually. Speed advantage does a lot here. I mean, that's the thing that light vehicles have in this matchup, is they do have a speed advantage. Despite the jumping and despite the placeholder, which doesn't exist yet. Where is the placeholder? 
No, seriously, where's the placeholder? Against light vehicles, placeholder is going to be a huge de decider. It's going to be the, one of the biggest things you have. I just said speed advantage. I mean, you want to nullify the speed advantage, limit your opponent's movement. Restrict them from moving at all. Because right now, Felthos just getting a nice position. They've got good defenses set up. Well, like, hide the ranges, but they have a good defense set up. They have... I mean, so does Rymark. That's the thing. Rymark's got a pretty solid south side. It is just defenders, though, so it it's only solid for as long as there isn't a fairly large force coming in, or a force coming in from the north. Amphib switch as well. Are we seeing, are we seeing boys? Are we seeing boys? I guess Rymark really wants to go for the mass slow. That's the only thing I can think of. They want to just stop the speed advantage by slowing them rather than stopping them outright using placeholders. An interesting choice. I don't... I don't know, the moderators kind of make sense for that, but even the moderators aren't surviving. Boys, I just don't know. I could see the use of... Well, let me think. I'm not really sure why you go for Amphib in the first place. I mean, boys aren't a bad idea. So I don't know why I'd go for Amphib as opposed to... I mean, with plus 36 like that, I can almost see going for just Reapers. Keeping the units you have in fi on all the, like the Firewalker and the Moderators, and then it's going for Reapers just to rip everything apart. Although that might push Felthos into Dominatrix, which wouldn't be the best idea. That's the one thing. Pushing Felthos into Dominatrix would be a risk that is probably best not taken. There we go. Yeah, Felthos doesn't really want to have that too much. Sorry, Felthos should probably want a Dominatrix. Rymark doesn't want that too much. Rymark would want Felthos to avoid that. And so far, Felthos is going for Ravager Ball. I don't understand exactly why it's just Ravager Leveler. I mean, it's not at all. It's, it's a solid combination. It's just against this mix. Against a pure Skirmisher mix, it is difficult. Although the Ravagers are holding their own, but still, the Levelers are basically just going to be fodder. Like I said, the boys aren't a bad idea. It's an interesting idea. It's not one I would have necessarily thought of, but it does slow them down, so that has the desired effect. Ah, the rate of fire. Of course, that would do it. Yes, I just noticed. The boys have a much ha faster rate of fire than the moderators. The boys are... Actually, I have the cheaper, too. 300... No, they're slightly more expensive. But the rate of fire is a great deal faster, meaning the slow effect is actually useful. The moderator slow effect is not going to be that handy against vehicles. We already saw that. But yeah, I'm still a bit surprised. I would have gone for Reapers myself. But then that's kind of the typical thing. Or actually, at plus 30, you can start to think Striders. At, you can start to. I mean, definitely you want to... Once you get a plus 40 or plus 50, you definitely want them. Actually, Primark, is that... That's Reclaim. That's still, though, at this stage in the game, Reclaim is valid. So a Strider Hub... I'm going to look for that. Is non-existent. There is no Strider Hub currently on the map. That is... Okay. I mean, that kind of makes sense. They are pushing heavily for their main ground forces. Now, Felthos, on the other hand, are they going to go for a Desperation Strider push? Actually, what am I saying, Desperation? Felthos has taken half the map. Felthos is pushing back. They're still behind. Their military is still very behind, but they are pushing back. But those levelers are really wastes of metal. Those levelers are donations. Pure Ravager wouldn't be a bad idea. Ravager Dummy wouldn't be a very bad idea either. Although, it looks like... Okay, is this commander going to go down? I, I think so. It looks like it... Yes, it will! That's down... Down goes that commander. Bigger deal than may look because... Actually, hang on. No, not totally. Because the build power of those particular... The build power of those conches is going to make up for the commander. I mean, the loss of the commander does mean the front line isn't as safe, but Rymark doesn't care. Rymark going for a counterattack, which should be the game. And Felthos, are they going to go to the north? And they got that built up. So they've taken half the map. Rymark did lose a lot of territory that they gained after the raid. But they still, they had a massive army as a result. This Firewalker is pretty much entirely because of that. And the army they have, like twice the army of Felthos. It's not perfect, but it'll do. It'll do just fine, I think. And here come the Wolverines. I was wondering when those would come in. Granted, that was to counter the Jacks, but hey, this works too. Actually, the boys will be able to counter that. The boys don't have a problem. The moderators will, the boys won't. Yeah, Felthos is not going to be going too strong here. Wow. Jumpbot versus Light Eagles. This is an odd matchup, although I don't think it was played the way that it would be played if it was a typical one. Like, I think if Felthos was expecting it, they probably would have gone for levelers much sooner, and then they probably would have gone for lotuses as well much sooner. I'm still surprised they didn't go for Wolverines until just now. I mean, against Pyros, those are a terrible idea, 
against Jaxos are a good idea. I guess moderators those are a good idea. And that's about it. Against placeholders they're iffy. But yeah, I'm surprised that Reimer did not go for a single placeholder. They just went straight for well then I'm going for just boys. Pure boys, ma'am, right now. Right, that's the thing, is boys are Boys are a bit of a wrench in that, but still, yeah, Wolverine's quite handy. I'm a bit surprised those weren't built sooner, especially when the Jack was spotted. Wolverine or Dominator, just because the Jack... Jack has to run through it. It can jump once, but in a minefield, the Jack can't deal with it. There's so many mines coming in from all sides, it has a pretty low rate of fire. But this is probably the last stand. I don't see Feltos being able to manage. If they get out of this, if they break this army, this is... No, let's, I want to see what... The army of Feltos or Remark is right now. This is about uh, this is about a third of the military that Rymark has by cost, and it's not going down, not anytime soon. So that is probably going to be game. That was the last chance Feltos had, and at this point, this is it. Feltos will likely GG and throw in the towel. The economy is fairly even though. Rymark, are they rebuilding? They're reclaiming. They're reclaiming a fair amount. Switch to scallops for some bizarre reason. I guess for the rate of fire, but boys have a decent rate of fire. They're not doing too badly against the mines. And the firewalkers can just push in. I don't really know why they want for scallops. Like I said, the rate of fire kind of makes sense, but honestly, if you're going to try to do minesweeping, get a couple pyros. Speaking of which, we have a sumo being built up. Yeah, a couple pyros, that would be the way to go for minesweeping. The rate of fire is huge. They just burn everything up. I don't think... You can have them attack ground, I suppose, if you suspect mines and areas. Firewalkers are also clearly doing a very good job holding their weight. I mean, we've seen the Firewalker buff in the last tournament, and that was doing a great job. Lodi was just playing match after match of jump bots, and we got to see a lot of Firewalker use that, those games. If you haven't seen those, they're on YouTube. You can just watch them whenever you like. But yeah, those those really showcase the Firewalker, all of the games that Lodi played. Rymark, however, is also showcasing the Firewalker, though Rymark... Rymark's a jump bot specialist. They probably would have been playing Firewalkers. I think they were using Firewalkers a bit before, but they're definitely using them now. I mean, you can see them, they're right there. Uh, against this mix, I don't know. The Wolverines weren't a bad idea. They just didn't come out soon enough. Strider, like a Tante, almost wouldn't be a bad idea just to rip everything apart, just to tank everything. Jack, like I said, Wolverines take care of that. Scallops wouldn't be able to deal with it. So, yeah, at this point, Rymark has such a huge army. Mostly retreated, healing up, but yeah, it's, it is very large. The only thing that Feldos can really do right now is GG. Or, actually, I don't know, they have enough... They have, if they really wanted to, if this is a tournament and they really wanted to pull it, I think they'd probably... Oh, three jacks, yeah, they need Wolverines. I think if... Or Dominator, actually, Dominator's at the table, almost are more valuable in this case. But yeah, that was an odd match. I don't think if we saw a Jump Bot Light Vehicle matchup, it'd be anywhere near like that. I think a lot of the reason that match went the way it did is because Jump Bot Light Vehicle is an unfamiliar matchup. And from the Light Vehicle side, like, what do you do? I mean, I think Rymark's I think Failtoss' choices were pretty good. I think Rymark's counter choices were excellent. Rymark's choices were... I mean, they know Jump Bots really well. Failtoss, I don't know if they really play against a lot of Jump Bot. They seem to be panicking a bit and going into autopilot, because Level of Raptor is kind of the light vehicle mid to late game autopilot mode. I didn't see any dummies. I saw Wolverines near the end, but not very many. I would have expected that against jump bots. Like, not against pyros, but against, like I said, moderators and jacks. At mid game, that's what you're going to be fighting, is moderators, jacks. Especially if you have a leveler army, why would Rymark build any pyros? As a minesweeper force, they're awesome, but against levelers, they die. So that's... Bit of an iffy choice, but I think Ryan, I think Feltos wasn't sure what to do. So good job, Rymark. Gonna be moving on from here to a match between Google Frog and Sanic. And yes, I realized that the ma main reason the game was won was because Rymark went for that harassment. That was basically it. That harassment was huge. The production value I mean the production thing would have ended the game faster, but yeah, that harassment was a big deal. And a lot of that was because Defender doesn't do much against Pyro. But then why would you expect anything other than darts and maybe a Scorcher to come in? And Defender works finding his darts. So yeah, that was 
just a matchup thing. Anyway, like I said, Google Frog and Sanic on Living Lands, the map that I was so excited about for the tournament, and I would like to see in 1v1, because I think it would work a lot better in 1v1. Worked okay in 2v2. It was fine. I mean, the mech's positioning was fine, and everyone seemed to go around the sides in a nice way. But I want to see it in 1v1. Also, I should point out, bit of a plug, I suppose. I'm not sure if this went onto YouTube, because it was a bit technically fraught, but... Orphilius did, in fact, make good on their bet, or at least try to make good on their bet, to remake Deadlands in half an hour, to look better than Living Lands. There were a lot of technical difficulties, so I'd say it's kind of inconclusive, just to be charitable. But yeah, it... I don't know if it's on YouTube at all. It was on Hitbox, but yeah, it... They tried. Like, if you want to be uncharitable, they failed, but there were so many technical difficulties, I'm not going to take that from them, like... If they tried again, that'd be kind of cool. So anyway, just pointing that out. Orphelius did, in fact, try that from the tournament. So anyone who watched the tournament knows what I'm talking about. Anyone who doesn't, you can watch the tournament. And I mentioned it at one point when we start Living Lands. But yeah, cool map. Deadlands remake. Be up in just a moment, so stay tuned for that.